In this video, we'll write the balanced net ionic equation for CaOH2 plus H3PO4, calcium hydroxide, and this is phosphoric acid. So we need to balance the molecular equation first. So this is the molecular equation here. So to balance the molecular equation, I have three calciums there, put a three here. I see that I have two phosphate ions and only one here. I'm gonna put a two here. So now I have 12 hydrogens, so if I put a six here, that balances the molecular equation. If you need help with that, there's a link in the description how to balance this molecular equation. Now we need to write the states for each substance. So calcium hydroxide, it doesn't dissolve a lot. It's fairly insoluble, but what does dissolve splits apart into its ions, breaks apart 100% into its ions. So we call this a strong base. That's a good one to remember. This is considered a strong base. So we're gonna put AQ, that it's dissolved, and what is dissolved dissociates. Phosphoric acid though, this is a weak acid. Because it's a weak acid, it will dissolve. It'll be aqueous, but it's really not gonna split apart into its ions very much. That'll become important later. Calcium phosphate, phosphates are pretty insoluble. So when these two compounds react, we'll get this calcium phosphate, but it'll be a precipitate. It'll fall to the bottom of the test tube as a solid. Let's write S for solid, and in water, that's a liquid. So we have the states for each substance. Now we're gonna split the strong electrolytes into their ions, and it'll give us the complete ionic equation. So calcium group two forms two plus ions. The hydroxide ion, that's always one minus. So I have three calcium ions, and then I have three times the two. So then I have two of these hydroxides times three. So I have a total of six hydroxide ions. And I'm not gonna write the states for each one right now. Let's do that at the end. Plus, we said that this phosphoric acid is a weak electrolyte. It's a weak acid, so it's not gonna split apart. We're just gonna put two H3PO4 and leave it like that. Those are the reactants. For the products, calcium phosphate, that's a solid. So since that is a solid, we don't split that apart into its ions either. So it just stays ca 3 PO4 2. And water, which is a liquid, we don't split that up either, and we have six of those. So this is our complete or total ionic equation. So next we would cross out these spectator ions that appear on both sides of our complete ionic. The thing is, there's nothing that appears on both sides. I have three calcium ions. I don't have them here by themselves as calcium ions. I don't have six separate hydroxide ions here, and there's no phosphoric acid on the side either. So the complete ionic equation is also the net ionic equation in this case. Let me clean this up and add the states in, and we'll have our net ionic equation for CaOH2 plus H3PO4. So this is the complete ionic equation and the net ionic equation for calcium hydroxide plus phosphoric acid. The key here to remember is this phosphoric acid, although it's gonna dissolve in the water, it won't split apart very much. And because of that, it's a weak electrolyte. And we leave this together. We don't split it apart into its ions. The other thing you need to remember is calcium phosphate, that's insoluble. And because of that, we're not gonna split it apart into its ions either. This is Dr. B. And thanks for watching.